A lot of people ask about the main 160 meter transmitter. Well, this is it. And now, before someone from the Crown Lands and Survey Department gets excited, it is actually rated at 100 watts. And this is the official handbook. Despite the complexity of the wiring, the actual RF section is very simple. The RF driver stage, a crystal oscillator driving an 807. The output from the 807 goes to the grid of the QB3300 the valve behind the fan. Originally there was very complex tuning for long wave, but this has all been replaced with a simple Pi network. This is the audio driver stage for the modulator tubes. The final in this is a pair of 6AQ5s. The modulator tubies. And all the circuitry for the modulator. The modulation transformer, it has a separate screen winding. This is the tone oscillator that was used for the MCW when the transmitter was in operation as a non-directional beacon at an airport. And this is the tone wheel that keyed the Morse code. It was RPPY, Ripley, which is outside of Melbourne. Part of the power supply, all the inductors and transformers. Supervisory and protection circuits are controlled by relays in these boxes. The overload system will have three resets, then turn off completely. And this is the other side of the cabinet with the doors open. The big transformer supplies the AC for the HT rectifiers. The big transmitter runs marginally more power than the standby transmitter, and this can be picked up by one person. I believe during the war that they used to cover up all 
almost all to light, a little tiny hole, which made the tiniest little glow. Which hole where? In the tram lights and train lights. Oh, you mean on the front panel, on front, the no, headlight? No, inside. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, bicycle lamp. How ridiculous. I read a, we've got a book of regulations here. And it says your bicycle lamp has to be, you know, you've got to cut a bit of cardboard with a two eighths. Cardboard with a two eighths slip through it, you know. Is it they're not dull enough already? <laughs> this is dim, dim light going along the road. The Japanese go, oh, hi, we must from Balindi, you know? <laughs> Yes, because you wouldn't be able to have a fluorescent tube up on top of your tower. No. Because then they stick with branch and bottom. <laughs> Yeah, it must have been awkward when there was all everything was dark. Yes, I can imagine walking around the streets. Apparently, of course, there were quite a few consequences of having all the lights on. I can imagine. Uh, it wasn't very good at all to be at, at not night. That, not, not that the old incandescent street lamps is any good anymore. <laughs> if you stood underneath, you might be able to look at a newspaper, the headlines. But I remember now when we had them down the street here. They weren't particularly bright at all, actually. Quite dull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have um, got a whole, got the whole set of poles and put no street lamps in the backyard. Up and down the driveway. Yeah, but it'd be ten feet and light them up at night and <laughs> have the glow coffee signs all on them. Of course, you used to have an air raid shelter in your backyard, didn't you? Yes. Mm. Which must have been fun. We had one in ours too, but it's. Never been there since I can re remember. No, I can't ever remember it being here. I think it got filled in almost straight after the war. It wasn't an asset to have in your backyard, I suppose.